All right, guys, there is finally a new version of Lightroom. I, I know we thought this day maybe would never come, that Lightroom was abandoned where and we were never going to get a new feature update, but Lightroom Classic CC just dropped yesterday. They've done some things with the naming that are quite honestly confusing, but Lightroom Classic CC is basically the, the name for regular old Lightroom that we've been using now for a decade. All right, there's also Lightroom CC, which is cloud only. I'll touch on that briefly at the end of the video. But what I want to do right now is jump in and just show you guys real quick what's new in Lightroom Classic CC. Now, first of all, it's only now in cloud. All the retail kind of version, standalone version is gone now with, with Lightroom 6. And we're not going to see these new features coming into Lightroom 6. So this is the new version it looks pretty much exactly the same, and frankly, there are not many new features. In fact, there's there's largely one new feature, but there is good news. This feature, I think, is if people aren't realizing necessarily how powerful this feature is, and that's mainly what I'm going to show you today, is how to utilize the new feature in your workflow and in your editing. Uh, one thing that's good and that is really a feature is that things have been sped up. This has been a complaint for a long time. Lightroom has been getting dog slow and we're like, hey, we're paying for this every month. You know, you won't let us buy standalone. Why isn't it getting better? A lot of people, I think, have been feeling frustrated. And, and looking at, at other competitive options, you know, like the OM1 tools, the Capture One, things like that. And there are some other options out there. And that's good, regardless of what you like. If you don't like what Lightroom's offering, it's great that there's other options out there that we can start expanding to in our workflows because competition is good for us. Let's jump into the develop module though. You will see that Lightroom has been way better optimized and I think you're gonna find that, especially on our modern computers, it's working a lot faster. That's a huge deal. And let's go in though to what we can do in the develop module. The first thing is, for those of you that are using SimeFX presets or your own presets or other presets, presets are power when it comes to workflow. The good news is the presets in, in Lightroom Classic basically Lightroom 2018, let's call this, uh, are still working. So all of our presets, you're still going to find they should be working just fine. In fact, I'm going to go to Natural HDR 2 here. And here's an image from Yellowstone, older file from a 5D Mark II, kind of pushing the limits of the dynamic range here. Let's see what we can bring out of it. So I'm going to use the Magic Dark Boost from Natural HDR 2. It looks good, but my sky, I'm kind of losing it, right? It's kind of washing out because it's been lightened up too much. And that's really where this new feature comes in. You'll see most of the settings here are going to be the same, all right? And there's not a lot of changes, even though there's a new process version that when you add this new feature, it'll switch the process version. The underlying quality of, of the details in the images doesn't doesn't really seem to be that much different. Now we're seeing a little bit of noise in this image because it's a it's a little bit of an older file and we've pulled a lot of dynamic range out of it, but it really is looking pretty good. How can we make it look better? Let's go into the local tools and that's really where we're seeing a boost. No, we still don't have local adjustments that you can use every slider in the develop module for. Yes, I know that would be nice. We pretty much have the same sliders. And hopefully we're going to see more features being added. It seems like they're kind of taking their time adding these new features. But let's go in here. Let's clean out some of the existing gradients and stuff like that that were left over. Okay, so we got this image a little bit flat, losing it kind of in the sky here. Let me make a gradient real fast for this sky, okay? So I'm going to take a gradient. I've brought a lot back into it. Now I want to take a little back out of the sky. I want to darken it a little bit, increase the contrast a little bit, maybe boost my clarity a little up here and uh, just generally make this a little bit nicer, okay? But it's kind of darkening some of the other things a little bit too much, okay? I also want to take the white balance and just blew it down just a little bit in the sky to kind of bring out that separation of warm and cool. All right, here's the beauty. You'll see this new little thing. This little circle, this little line right here is basically the new feature in Lightroom, and it is actually very powerful, and I'm excited about it. There's a lot in here. If you click this here, let's go with luminance. I'll show you color in a moment. You're gonna see a slider come up, all right? What this slider is is zero to 100, so essentially black to white, fits in great with zones, and kind of a similar concept to what we're doing in Loomist and Photoshop actions and things like that. Of course, in Photoshop, we have way more control, so Lightroom is not replacing Photoshop. It's not. 
<laughs> it just isn't. But it does give us a lot of control because we're working right with that raw file. It's phenomenal for dynamic range and, and detailed control. And so for that side of things, I like working in Lightroom. And then I go to detailed refinements and I head over to Photoshop and actions and things like that. Here's what this does. The range mask takes my gradient. So I've added it globally right now. As I adjust this, I can define this to only apply to a certain range of luminance. So let's say I set it to 50 to 100. That's now the range. Basically, zone 5 to zone 10 or middle gray to white is the range that's allowed, okay? I could crank this up, and I'm doing the same thing. So I'm actually going to set this so it only affects the lighter areas. Let's say 65 or so, so about zone 7, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, somewhere right in there. And we'll go right here. This is more like zone seven and a half to 10. And then we can actually see the smoothness of it as well. We can adjust the smoothness. And if I hold the Alt or Option key, much like many of the tools that are detail related in Lightroom, you can kind of adjust that smoothness or effectively like the feather of the mask that you're making. Okay, so I can go like this. And you'll see now that I have masked this and it's defined it only to the area that I wanted to. So it's darkening down those blues and the, the luminance values that I've defined without really touching that much else. And I can keep cranking this up and only apply it to the highlights. I can add some saturation into those areas so it's boosting the saturation on those blues without radically affecting everything else. It's actually a very cool feature, very cool tool. And you can see that I can really bring out some of the life in the image. Let's go to a portrait though, and let's look at this one. Okay, here's an image here. This is looking good. She's a little hot on the white pants here, right? So I'm actually gonna use uh, a preset from Belladonna, which is our latest preset. And I'm just gonna apply a quick uh, portrait preset. Okay, so let's use like the clean skin one. All right, so this looks nice, right? Good looking preset, yay. Uh, but her pants are really, are really bright, okay? I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna make Let's get rid of that one. For some reason, it keeps throwing these. <laughs> I keep having these other ones in here. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do is I just don't want the highlights blown on that. Yes, I could adjust the highlights globally, but then I'm gonna start losing a little bit in her face, and I wanna maintain brightness in her face. So I'm gonna make a radial, and I'm gonna dial back the exposure a little bit on this one, all right? I'm gonna invert it so it affects the inside of the radial. I'm gonna make it very softly feathered. And I'm going to do highlights and exposure a little bit on these pants. But check this out. Now I'm going to use both on this. I'm going to use the luminance like we just talked about. And I'm going to only affect about 85 plus. All right. So if I were to delete this, you'll see it's only affecting these highlights on the pants, bringing that texture back in. I think that's good. I'm going to leave that one. Now I'm going to make one for her face and her flesh tones. This is where the other option comes in. Okay, so I'm going to go in here, and I just want to bring a little bit of warmth, a little bit of life into the face. So again, I'm going to apply it kind of in the whole circle. So I'm inverting it so it implies inside the circle. I'm brightening up her face a little bit. I'm going to warm up her face a little bit. I'm going to add a little contrast while dropping the clarity to soften up that skin a little bit. And so you can just see kind of these different things I'm doing just to make those flesh tones really nice. Okay, now I'm going to use the color mask. I'm going to take that color mask, click this eyedropper, and I'm going to select flesh tones. And I can actually shift and select to select multiple flesh tones. Okay, so I can take multiple samples across the image, and there I go. Now, I've got this here. That's all there is to it. I'm going to put that eyedropper back. And if I delete this, you'll see that this is very subtle. I'm actually only affecting the tones, the color values that I selected. And again, I can control the, the amount or... Really, this seems most like the feather. I don't know why they have different names in each one, but you can control kind of how it flows and how that mask is going to mask right here, just like that. And so here we're using actually both the skin tone and this one, okay? So let's actually uh, go and let's reset all, and we'll see kind of where we started with this one. Applied a preset, applied some gradients, right? Good stuff. And again, with this one here, same kind of deal. Uh, that luminance masking built in really allows you to have some, some rich control over this and really get control of the dynamic range and the details. So that's, that's essentially what's notable so far 
in the latest version of Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, as they're now calling it. Lightroom CC is basically a new approach and it's a separate app, has less features, less controls in it, but it's it's all cloud-based. And so for some people, I think that's going to work. I think for those of us that are professionals and dealing with a lot of images and large files and terabytes and terabytes, probably at least for now, the the Lightroom Classic is the way to go. You guys can watch some other videos on the differences and, and what's new in the Lightroom Cloud version and all that kind of stuff. The bottom line is here, we're seeing a faster Lightroom. We're seeing some new features that are very powerful. And I think most of all, we're finally seeing some forward momentum on Lightroom besides, you know, just camera profile and, and lens updates. And that's pretty exciting. Let me guys, let, let me know what you guys think and, and what you're thinking of Lightroom and what you're thinking this is all doing going forward. And uh, we'll see you next time.